Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're going to be solving a Physics 7a practice problem on the topic of microscopic uh, thermal energy. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like as this really helps promote our channel. So this is the problem that we're going to be working on today. Uh, we have, uh, let me see, uh, below is a one-dimensional structure composed of a total number of four and eight atoms. The double line represents a strong bond, where the single line is a weaker Sheldonium-Cupertonium uh, with Sheldonium-Cupertonium bond. Each particle is free to move in one dimension only. For all below, show your work and explain your answers. Express your answers in terms of numerical values where applicable. Assume constant volume heat capacity measurements only. So we have to calculate the heat capacity for this substance. Then we are going to add enough energy to break all the weak bonds and we're going to measure the heat capacity again. Then we're going to add more energy and we're going to break every single bond. And once we have a gas, we're going to calculate the ratio of the speeds of the uh, Sheldonium and the Cupertonium. And then we're going to get to part D when we get there. All right, so as you can see, I have my problem over here. So let's just go ahead and, you know, start from the top. And let's, let's see what answers we start uh, getting from this. So the first thing is we have a one dimensional solid and we have to calculate heat capacity. Now, uh, heat capacity, so let me just A. So big C is just the, your number of moles times little c, which is molar per mole. So this is basically your um, little n times little c is uh, one half times r times number of modes per particle. So, um, little n in this case is 4, because this is 4 moles, it's a total of 4 Na atoms, then, or 1 half, it's just the 1 half, R is, uh, what is it, is it on the quiz? Oh yes, yes it is on this quiz, so I get to use it, 8 point uh, 31, remember the empty PDF version of the quizzes is available to you for you to see. And then the number of moles per particle we have to figure out. So first of all, this is a solid. So solids only have uh, vibrational energy, uh, vibrational modes. And usually we just go ahead and say, okay, this is a solid, so it must be six. However, the uh, logic behind the six is that we have vibrational and then it's two per dimension. So it's two for X, two for Y and two for C. However, this solid is only one dimensional, not three dimensional, which means that instead of having six total modes, we're only gonna have two. So this is only two modes like this. Again, the assumption behind the usual six is three dimensions. This is just one dimension, so that's only two. One of them is gonna be kinetic energy vibrational mode, and then the other is gonna be potential energy vibrational mode. So multiplying this, let's see. So one half, four times one half, times 8.31 times 2, 33.24. And this answer is Jules Kelvin, no more because this is total. Final answer, there we go. Okay, so now moving on to part B. So for part B, you break all the weaker bonds. The resulting gas particles are free to move in three dimension. Calculate CB, assuming all modes are active. Okay, so we have to do the same, but now we're gonna have to do it for a di diatomic gas. How do I know that this is a diatomic gas? Well, the problem is saying that we're gonna break just the weaker bonds, and the weaker bonds 
are the uh, single lines. So this is broken, this is broken. So for part B, we're gonna have basically a bunch of diatomic atoms just moving around. And uh, so these are diatomic, these are diatomic gas, and then the problem says assume all modes are active. So basically we have to repeat this, but we, ju we do have to make some uh, changes. So CV for part B, N in this case is going to be equal to two. So why do we go from four to two? Well, when you think about it, you know, the total number of atoms, so total number of atoms is four times no, uh, Avogadro's number. However, this is the total number of uh, molecules. So this is like moles of the diatomic gas, like the diatomic molecules, because it takes two atoms to make one molecule. Are you following me? Because it takes two atoms to make one molecule, then in reality, we'll have two uh, quote unquote moles of this substance. Whereas before, you know, when it was a solid and every atom was just like arranged, then sure, every atom goes here, so that's a four, but now it's two because we need two of one of each to make a molecule. Uh, so now this is one half, that doesn't really change. That's the equation, 8.31, that's the equation. And then we also have to change the number of molecules per particle because now we have a diatomic gas when, with all active modes. And we know, because I just did a review session that's already on YouTube and that you can go ahead and see, that for a diatomic gas, all active modes means a total of seven active modes. So let's just go ahead and do our multiplications. I'm sorry if I'm going too fast with the mm, counting of modes, but I literally changed my rules in terms of this channel to make a video that's specific about that. Uh, so 58.17 and I don't want to be too redundant on these videos because you know time is precious especially when you're studying so do feel free to go back and see that video if you don't know how I'm counting my modes uh, but otherwise part B is done all right so now we're gonna go ahead and do part C so part C says um uh, you add some more energy and notice that at t is equal to 500, so I'm just going to 500, all of the stronger bonds are broken as well. If the mass of sheldonium is nine times the mass of cupertonium, calculate the ratio of their speeds at t is equal to 500 Kelvin. Okay. So the mass of sheldonium is nine times, so this nine times okay so we have to compare their velocities by using this knowledge and this knowledge so the first thing to know is that if the uh, sheldonium and the cupertonium are at the same temperature then they have the same kinetic energy. Uh, you know, the average per atom is the same. Why is this the case? Well, if we go back to our equations and we remember our e-thermal equation, if you have the uh, same number of particles for each and the temperature you know, for your e-thermal, if you have the same number of particles, if they are at the same temperature, um, then, and they're both ideal gases just floating around, that, that means that they have the same uh, kinetic energy. 
So if they have the same kinetic energy and we remember our kinetic energy equation, which is basically kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. This is just an equation for kinetic energy. Then we must make them equal. Uh, so one half mass sheldonium velocity sheldonium squared is equal to one half mass cupertonium velocity cupertonium squared the one half to go away and then I will also remember this equation so instead of mass sheldonium I'm going to write nine times cupertonium so nine times mass cupertonium so this just comes from substituting the equation b sheldonium squared is equal to mass cupertonium b2 be and the reason why i did this is because now i can cancel this so nine times v sheldonium squared is equal to p p e squared and if we take square root of everything this is three times b sheldonium with no squared that is equal to b p e final answer and this means that sheldonium no that cupertonium p e atoms are moving three times faster than the SH atoms. And this is of course on average. Final answer. Why is it that PE is faster? Because three sheldoniums make one cupertonium, so that means that cupertonium is bigger. So that's, that's who is faster. Okay, so uh, this, oh no, we do have a part D. So I'm gonna go ahead and put part D on the screen. So part D is you take two moles of the substance in part A and one mole of the substance in part B and you place them together in an insulated container. Compare the magnitudes of the changes in thermal energy of the two substances as they can come to thermal equilibrium. Assume there is no change in bond energy in the interval you are studying. Okay, so this is a little bit of a trick question uh, in the sense that you know maybe the expectation is that students are gonna uh, mess this up I don't even need a new page for this so uh, final answer for the is same change in e-thermal for both why is this because this is a closed system This is an insulated container. Um, therefore, um, delta ETH for the solid plus delta ETH for the uh, gas have to be equal to zero, so they must be equal to each other. So basically this is a little bit of a trick question because they're giving you, oh, it's like uh, one mole of the substance B, two moles of substance A, ta, 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 ta. But at the end of the day, you could have answered this question from your very first deal because this is a closed system and then you only have two bubbles. So you just have the solid and the gas. So, you know, assuming that the gas goes down that's the exact amount that this one has to go up. It doesn't have to be this way because it depends on like whatever the substance is, whatever, whatever. But at the end of the day, what has to happen is that because this is a closed system, whatever one bubble goes up, the other bubble has to go down. End of story, that's how we do it. That's how we've been doing it. So uh, 
a little bit of an interesting uh, trick question because I bet that they were expecting you to do something with the moles or whatever. But it is really as simple as that, as remembering, you know, our very first DL and our energy conservation equation. So anyways, this is the end of this practice problem. If you guys found it useful, please make sure to leave a like. That really helps promote our channel. And I will see you guys on the next video.